Hey everybody, Alex Camilio here, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. And this week we want to talk a little bit about branding, but not necessarily that typical, you know, how do I create a lifestyle brand that I'm sure you've seen everywhere. No, this week we're going to go back to basics. So whether you've already created a brand and a really strong brand, or whether you're looking to create that new lifestyle brand that everybody's talking about, we wanna give you the four core components, the tips and tricks that I've used over the years to systemize how I create brands for all of the various tech products and real estate companies that I have over the last decade. So you wanna know what those four are? They're pretty simple, but it's amazing how much time and money you can save by simply having these four items done. So number one is the logo. Number two is a full color palette. Three is the fonts or the font package. And four is actually where to use that logo. Now these all sound pretty simple, but let's go in some more depth. So number one, your logo. Now I know this sounds simple, right? Go online, hire somebody, um, hire some graphic designer online that's gonna do this logo for you. But there's a problem. See, a lot of those graphic designers don't necessarily think about all of the different places that you have to place your logo when you're actually going to use it. Beyond that, they're designing for what, well, what you like. And they're not necessarily keeping in mind all of the current design trends that are out there, okay? So first of all, when you're having a logo designed, you wanna make sure that that logo is as close to either square or round some sort of aspect ratio that's going to be really pretty square to begin with. Now, don't worry, you can always add your name, um, you know, your business name, some sort of font outside or separate to that main square or round logo that you're going to use, but you need that square or round logo in the first place. And the reason being is that while some websites or some things might work with a really, you know, kind of elongated or tall type logo. There are a lot of places like Facebook, like if you're gonna build an app, like all of those things that are out there that really truly need, need a either square or round logo or, or what's called an icon version of the logo. Facebook, for example, is really specifically looking for this, um, especially if you're setting up an app or your uh, ad account or things of that nature. Okay, so those are the core, core components to a logo that you absolutely need. Now, I mentioned following current design trends as well. Now, that's certainly a thing out there. It's a lot harder to do. Um, but one thing I will note is that something that's called flat design has become very, very popular. Uh, over the years, we've seen Apple, Microsoft, Google, and if you want more uh, in-depth into, into what's actually quote-unquote flat design, you can check out the article that goes along with this video and has a lot more information there. The other thing is you can always go to Google and just type in current design trends, current logo trends, and it's actually going to give you a bunch of articles that you can go and look and say, okay, what's really happening this year in the design world? to get a better understanding of how your logo, your brand can match and look like it's current, right? Look like it's right now, okay? Now, number two on my list is a color palette. Now, when I say color palette, I don't just mean your one or two colors that comes with your logo. I know, we all, we get those one or two colors, we wanna use those everywhere. In reality, um, you wanna have the entire spectrum, right? Red, orange, green, blue, yellow, you want all of those colors that are going to actually match your color palette. You wanna have a full palette, okay? Now, a lot of times you'll either have a color that you're already starting with, or you're gonna to need to do this from scratch. And in that case, what we're gonna do here is, I'm actually gonna take you over, and we're gonna look at colors.co, and again, I referenced this in the article, colors, C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O, and what this allows you to do is either come in here and start from scratch, or you can plug in colors of your own like I did with our red and our gray or our black here, okay? And then all you do is you simply press the space bar, and it's gonna come up with new palettes for you, okay, that are constantly, that work, 
right? New palette, new palette, new palette of colors that work with those two or three or whatever it is, original colors that you're starting with. And sometimes it takes a number of times to go through this and really pick the colors that you want. But let's say I want this, right? Green, I really like that. I'm gonna lock that in place. And now we're just gonna rotate the other colors that are left, all right? Super simple tool uh, to figure out a palette for yourself, okay? So that's a, a great starting point. All right, so make sure you have that palette available. Now, this is a really big one because whenever it comes time to create your website, your landing pages, your advertisements, all of those other pieces of collateral that go with your business, having these colors just ready to go, right? Pick and put them somewhere as opposed to having to figure out all those different things or have a really limited selection to work from. This is really key, saves you a ton of time, a ton of money in the long run, okay? Next, and last but not least here in terms of the, the three main components before we get into where and how to use this branding kit. Next one are fonts. And what a lot of people don't understand is that when it comes to a website, your business card, all the different marketing that you're doing out there, those fonts are really, really in many ways more important than even your logo that you state or start at the beginning of the page. The reason for which is that many times that font, that text is going to be taking up more of the page, especially on websites, right? And it does a lot more visually to set the stage for what you're doing. Now, again, a lot of times when you go to a graphic designer, you go get this logo done, they might give you the one font. They might give you that one font that goes along with your logo. The problem though, is that one font is probably not going to work in all the different pieces in your website. And you're gonna want a few different fonts that all work together, okay? So what I do is I use a tool called Google Fonts. Um, and this is simply fonts.google.com. And you can either plug in a font that you already have that you're already using, or you can go to a font that's already out there. And in this case, if I go to uh, Roboto, I can actually just scroll down the page here and it's gonna give me right here, popular pairings, right? Popular pairings with Roboto. And it's gonna give me some different fonts that I can use to create that package, all right? So those are the, the three main components. You first want your logo, make sure it's easy to read, easy to understand. You want it to be that square or that round aspect ratio. You can always add things on top of it. You want a full color palette for what you're doing and we gave you some simple tips, right? You want some basic fonts, basic core set of fonts that you can use day in and day out throughout what you're doing. But then last but not least, we need to have an understanding of essentially where we use those logos, okay? Where we use those fonts, where we use those colors. Because a lot of what we do at Agent Inner Circle relates to direct response marketing getting people to respond to your ads, getting people to respond to your newsletters or letters that you're sending them. And in some cases, adding your logo, your marketing, your colors, all of those things can actually be detrimental to what you're trying to accomplish. All right, and I'll give you an example. A lot of times when we're sorting mail, we'll be going through it and the moment our minds are triggered to think I'm being sold to, I'm gonna throw that piece in the trash, right? So if I get a letter and it's glossy or you know it has the clear sleeve envelope or things like that, a lot of times I'm just gonna get rid of those because I know they're marketing. I know they're trying to sell me right off the jump. Whereby if it's a personal letter, I might be more inclined to open it, okay? On the flip side of that, if this is your website, if this is your business page, if these are your business cards, they absolutely do need your logo, your brand, your colors, your fonts, right? The core basics to what you're doing, all right? So website, Facebook, business cards, if it is a true business front where people are expecting to see advertising, they're expecting to see your business when they get there, okay? You want to be using those different pieces to your brand. However, if you're trying to elicit an immediate response, if you're trying to send out personal touches to folks, those may not be the best case to include your entire brand kit. So be mindful where you're using your brand and be sure that you have those absolutely three critical components 
your logo, and it's done in a format that works, a full color palette, and those few fonts that you can use throughout. So that being said, this has been Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. Please give us a share, uh, give us a like, give us your comments on this. If you have any questions, we are more than happy to help. Post your questions uh, down below, whether it be on Facebook or in the blog, please post your comments. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much for your time. Again, Alex Camilio, signing out.